my name's Chris Leon, and today I'm in Louisiana, uh, right in front of this beautiful cotton field. It's early June, and we know that, you know, we've got bollworm that will be moving into this cotton here shortly once it starts to square, starts to flower. And today, Emeritus Professor Rogers Leonard, uh, now a private consultant, has, has agreed to give us a little bit of time to talk about cotton, talk about this upcoming crop, and and uh, you know what we can expect this year. So, Dr. Leonard, thank you for being here, uh, giving us a little bit of time. It's been a every year is unique and unusual. I mean, we know that, that this year, you know, looking at the GDUs this morning, so we're about 183 GDUs above last year, and we're 230 GDUs above our historical average. So. You know, with that in mind, I mean, what are you seeing in the field? You know, what is this going to do for our, our insects this year uh, moving forward? Well, I think the first thing we need to think about is that the entire crop, all of our crops, are moving along at a much more rapid pace than we've historically seen, certainly compared to last year. Your, your GDU numbers certainly support that as, as well. So as the crops move forward, the same environmental conditions that drive the um, the crops drive the insect development cycles as well. So the hotter it is, the faster that we tend to see insects develop uh, in the fields. As long as we've got adequate moisture, everything is progressing uh, at a similar rate. Insects and crops are tied pretty well together. Now, one thing that we have seen in Louisiana this year is a fairly uniform period of planting for many of our crops. That's likely to distribute our pest pressure across many more acres rather than having a few acres planted very, very early, which, which would function as a trap crop to pull insect pests in, the general distribution of crops in a more timely manner probably will help to reduce some of the, the pressure we may see, at least from the early season insect pest infestations. So now turning to uh, bollworms, bollworms being one of the major cotton pests, you know, we've been using and relying on BT products for a number of years. You know, initially we were applying them as a, as a foliar spray, and then we incorporated that BT gene into cotton. So around 1996, the first Folgar gene came out. That was followed a few years later by Bolgar 2, and, and now we're into Bolgar 3. So Bolgar 3 has been out on the market for roughly five years. The universities do a great job with their overspray program and they're looking at conventional cotton, Bolgar 2, Bolgar 3, and how it responds. So we know that some of the earlier technologies, obviously if you've got the insect pest pressure, that we see a really nice yield response there. So Bolgar 3 is, is still working effectively at this point in time, but we have seen the trend over the three years of data that we do get a positive economic return on the grower by an overspray. So, so with that in mind, I mean, what are your thoughts on on an overspray of Bolgard 3 cotton? You know, when is it justified and, and what would you expect? Well, with the BT cotton technologies that we have out there, we have to understand that the insect has to feed on the plant to ingest the toxin before you see mortality occur. So there is some damage that can happen prior to the insect becoming intoxicated. In addition, these BT proteins are produced as a function of plant metabolism, and anything that stresses the plant can certainly down, downgrade or, or influence in a negative way the amount of toxin being produced in those plants. We saw this with Bogard 1, with Bogard 2, and it's very likely happening with Bogard 3. In addition, as a plant ages, gets older, becomes more mature, the, the level of plant toxin that's increased tends to go down as well. If that's coupled with a very heavy egg lay over position by a uh, bollworm in cotton fields, it's likely that we can get an initial infestation started. It's capable of causing a little, a little bit of damage. And in some instances, that level of damage could be economically justified with an overspray. So I think that there are certain times uh, of the season that oversprays certainly can be warranted on Bogar 3 cotton. Uh, it, Bogar 3, uh, the 3 gene in other technologies is working very well right now, but it is likely that we can overwhelm the system. 
In fact, several of the university uh, extension recommendations support the possibility of using oversprays on Bogar 3 cotton when they're justified. To determine if they're justified, they're not automatic applications. Nearly every cotton field in the, in the south, southern southeastern U.S. is scouted by an ag consultant, by an extension agent, or a family member that's trained to look at these crops. And so it's important from the standpoint of picking the right product, the right rate, and the right timing to be successful in controlling uh, bollworm on, uh, on BT cotton, whether it's Bogard 2 or Bogard 3. So Dr. Leonard, so Vanticore Insect Control is a, is a straight diamide product. So it's, it's not a mixture. You know, being that straight product, do you see any, any benefit there, you know, as far as, as flaring secondary pests if they're not already present? You know, what is the benefit of using a product like Vanticore Insect Control? Well, certainly one of the benefits in being a, a single mode of action is that it's not likely to flare other pests. It's very specific in working against caterpillar pests. And that's important today because we have limited tools to manage other pests in cotton, such as cotton aphids, tarnished plant bugs, and spider mites. So it works very well against the targets that it's recommended for. In addition, that mode of action is completely different from the mode of action that the BT toxins work on caterpillars. So from a resistance management perspective, that's a great way to help manage or delay resistance to the BT products in the future. So, so finally this morning, you know, I spent the last couple of years in high school and my early college years scouting cotton and it was in that transition between conventional cotton and, and BT coming out and you know at that point in time it seemed like the moths were always laying their eggs in the terminal and we weren't really looking at bloom tags we weren't looking at, at bowls and and the bracts and everything else how has that changed do you think that the the moths have adapted and they're laying eggs differently is it a row spacing a different point in the year that that they modify because it seems like now you see more and more uh, infestations in the lower canopy. Well, uh, there's several things going on, on on sampling cotton today as compared to a couple of decades ago as a function of the, the BT cotton technologies. I think that the, the bollworm uh, and tobacco budworm back then have always laid their, their eggs up and down the plant. It's just been the highest concentration uh, for us to find has been in the top of that plant. What's happened is the behavior of the larvae have changed a little bit. They're actually searching for that spot that may have the lowest amount of toxin where they, they can get the, the food that they need to survive. And we typically see a lot of, of uh, small larvae that spin down from an egg hatch and land in a, a cup, if you will, a white flower. And that's one reason that we sample bloom tags so heavily is that it's pretty common to find those larvae underneath that, that black, dried bloom tag. As for down in the plant, usually as a plant matures, the oldest part of the plant is in the bottom, so we're likely to see older, older larvae down there that have survived. In addition, if it's a lower, uh, a lower toxin in the bottom of the plant, if those eggs hatch, we're, we're gonna see more survivorship down there because there could be a, a, lower, a lower toxin as well. So, so Vanicor is a very important tool in our cotton insecticide arsenal to manage, manage crop pests in the south. Today we're talking about cotton where it is one of the only other tools that we have beyond the BT cotton technologies. So it's important for us to steward all of those tools that we have available and Vanicor is a great option to use when needed on all of our cotton technologies. So, so with that, I want to conclude this, this episode of this Tech Talk and definitely thank Dr. Leonard for being here, for meeting with us in this field, giving us a little bit of his time this morning. And if you have any further questions, please reach out to your local FMC Tech Service Rep or your local FMC Retail Marketing Manager. Mm -hmm.